Hi everyone, and so this is an unexpected uh, video um, that I wasn't certainly planning on making till like um, about 20 minutes ago. And where do you start, right? And um, I'm making it because um, I just, well, let me get my bearings here and try to think because um, I don't think I've really slept in days for the most part. I guess I told you guys I really wanted to um, to continue to not only show um, the hope of this, but you know that there's going to be bad with the better. I don't really like to say good because I don't know that I ever have a day where I feel like good because I mean if I felt good I would I would like to think I felt normal and there's not a single day that's ever close to normal so there's but there's better you know like days that allow you to go have lunch with your with your child <laughs> And um, I know I look like complete hell, and I don't even care, actually. So, it's not like this is a dating service. Um, but anyway, uh, speaking of that, I have these two little um, lovebirds. I, I put out a bird feeder, and I'm just now looking out at them. They just popped up right when I said that. They... Uh, they look like little robins, I think. It's a male and a female, and they come to my bird feeder every day. It's kind of the one thing that makes me smile, is looking at these two little birds. <laughs> anyway. Um, but I guess I wanted to make this because, uh, like I say, the good, the bad, the ugly, the, the horrific, not that this is, this is not a, like a, a horror of a wave day. This is a, this is like a wave that's happening due to something else, but it's not like uh, like a wave that, that we know to be like a, a severe wave, even though it's not good. <laughs> and I uh, Monday I had a visit from a dear friend. If you're on Facebook, you saw the picture. And um, she's been going through a lot of stuff herself, personally, health-wise, but she was finally able, she took some time and and visited me, my first visitor, um, my first non, I mean, yeah, as far as friends or church or anybody like that, she's my only one, my first one, and, um, and I've been here almost a year, so, and it was really, it meant a lot to me, but anyway, my point is that Monday was still a continuation of my last video, so I still felt pretty good when she was here. So I know from her perspective, even though well, I didn't, I, I I didn't look very good, but and but I, you know, we had a great three hour like visit, and we talked and cried together, laughed together, and then and, and I seemed fairly okay, you know. And um, um, but. And you guys know how I feel about diet and everything, right? So I made, I'd had my, drank my protein shake while I was, while she was here. Then made my usual big salad, but later than normal. And, um, about 8.30 that evening, Monday evening. And, um, the only thing I did different was I had a new, um, uh, organic zucchini and a cucumber. I don't think the cucumber was organic because I, I peel the cucumbers. I don't worry about them s as much being organic. Um, but that was the only thing I did different. And the only thing I can figure, it was, it was, but it was, it had to be food poisoning because I haven't been around anybody to get a stomach virus, but I've never had the experience of stomach virus or I think I've had a stomach virus like what happened to me. Um, and I think I've had food poisoning maybe once in my life. This was like beyond anything I'd ever experienced. And I couldn't believe it was happening. I, you know, you like, this can't be happening. And it can't be happening now. And it, it just, just can't be happening. And I think if I had been in the middle of like a really bad wave, I don't, 
I don't think I'd be here making this video right now. It was that bad. I don't know. I don't know, because I was just like, just take me to God, just please, because uh, this is it. This is it. This must be the final curtain call right here. It was, uh, yeah, it was, it was severe, like way beyond severe. Um, and it went on for hours. And you guys can imagine all the, if you've ever had anything like that, the, all the gory, d disgusting details of it. And basically cleaning up my whole apartment. <laughs> it was, <laughs> and, um, and it also was combined with excruciating, excruciating stomach pain that lasted through about 11, 30, 12 last night. So I only ate for the first time since, since Monday, since Monday's dinner. <laughs> Um, a little while ago today so I'm just extremely weak and 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 me being someone who's who feels like diet is so hugely important with this and keeping our our system strong and um, to be able to fight this it's uh yeah it's, it just put me it just set me set me way back and in in a lot of ways and um and then there hasn't been any sleep, so, and, you know, I don't take anything for sleep. There's nothing I haven't been put on in my lifetime for sleep. Um, so there's nothing they could give me. You name it, I've been on it. There's nothing I could take right now that's going to help me sleep. It's all this, It's all part of this anyway, and I had insomnia is why I got into this disastrous, horrific mess. So I was an insomniac before before these drugs and um, before antidepressants, before uh, benzo, I was already an insomniac for what I've been told by a trauma therapist, therapist was uh, likely due to uh, trauma earlier in life, you know, whatever. But my point in making this video is, um, is that we all, People get stressed. People have so much stress in their life with just life in general. And people try to avoid stresses. But the stresses of money, the stresses of marriage, the stresses of relationships, children, um, family, parents, jobs, careers, school, just uh, you know, the countless things that cause stress in our lives that even before we ever went through this, I mean, think about how you guys were before you were in this. And when all of those things would come in to affect your life and how stressful those things were even before you, know, you were going through benzo withdrawal or benzo dependency, benzo tapering, um, uh, withdrawals from other uh, psychiatric medications, whatever, or combination. So, and and how how extremely um, difficult and unbearable a lot of those things are normally for a lot of people. There's so many people who can't even handle sitting in traffic without losing um, control, and you know. So, uh, but and then you have all the things that happen that can cause even more stress. I think I've moved in the last six or seven years about a dozen times. You have all these, you know, and everybody knows how stressful moving can be. So then you have all the normal bigger stresses of life, whether it would be a divorce or a broken relationship or um, issues with your children or whatever, or uh, your health issues um, with yourself or family members or whatever, um, and just but you know, like in, but the bigger things that come ac across, like you know, and certainly um, even if it's not health, just like moving and just things that just totally just like feel like you're just at your wits end and you know and you're just like what next you know what next you know and and then money and then you know and you got bill collectors calling and you're working so hard to 
to build your credit score back up like I am because because you're judged on your credit score, you know, even with car insurance and it's like you you know, you know you're never going to be independent at least in this country if you don't have a decent credit score. It doesn't matter what kind of person you've been or how how well you've paid your bills on time, but if you were a single mom and lost your job and then lost your home, you know, then it's like well, then you're not worthy of anything because your credit score just dropped to nothing because of that. You know, what you were as a person or in life or how you paid your, or how much you tried or whatever, doesn't matter. Um, you know, a, a, someone who's got several DUIs could have an easier time getting, you know, a better deal on car insurance than you because of how your credit score, if they have a higher credit score. So it's really sick, all this stress is that, that's put on people now with tax time and all these things. And so my point to this is that all of those things are really extremely difficult, you know, on their own. People that think that cause people to, to have therapy, you know, whether it's um, tr uh, PTSD or family or, uh, you know, um, abuse. And through this, we are... Like I say, we we don't have the support that that others do with serious illnesses. So we we are treated differently, and we are kind of like, basically like, you, we should be able to handle all this stuff on our own, and that's uh, so all the normal stresses of life, all the big stresses of life that are normally very difficult in their own. We're just expected to just. <laughs> be a trooper, you know, and, um, you know, we got this and, and all that. And even when we're alone, because even if you're alone, you have bills, you have responsibilities, you have, you have to try to keep food. You have to try to get to the store, which I desperately need to do, but I'm going to have to try to get my son to go or something. I, I foolishly went during a wave last week and literally had to be helped with my PIN number at the checkout by someone who I used to go to church with about three years ago. It was quite embarrassing and humiliating and she then had to uh, help me to my car and it was just awful, you know? And we don't really need to be on the road. It's not safe for other people either, even if it is just around down the street, you know? So we gotta take that into consideration also that we are impaired, you know. So we need to take other people into consideration um, and not just be like, I'm, I'm really stubborn. Like, well, I don't care. And nobody's calling me. Nobody's texting me. Nobody's going to help me. So dang it, I'm, you know, uh, you know, I'm getting in the car and I'm driving to the store. And then, you know, and it, and it proves to be a horrible, horrible, terrible idea. Certainly one night when I did it at 11 o'clock at night because I was like, I was so upset with nobody help and I got in the car at 11 o'clock at night and went to Walmart. I had no business doing that. But anyway, so I guess my point to this is just that, um, you know, there's a lot of things that when people get sick that people take over for them. You know, they help them with their finances. They help them with their medications. You know, I'm now weighing my medication on a scale, but I don't have anybody here that figured out the scale for me. And, um, the scale that I found, and thank goodness, in the top of my closet. This was a scale, you guys. I'm going to throw this in here for a purpose. This was a scale, and uh, I, I guess I'll show it to you next. It's just a little scale. I put a picture of it on uh, Facebook and um, with what I was doing, and then now I'm weighing. But the the scale and the the capsules, because we were going to crush the, the tablets, my fiance and I crushed the tablets, and then start making our own capsules, so I can't. So he had ordered all this stuff for us to do this. And um, before I moved out of my home, just to throw in one more like horrifically cruel thing that he could do to me, he, um, the, the, the scale and the, the capsules and the, 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 the thing that presses the capsules together and all that was in the bottom drawer of a hutch we had in our den. And um, when I had decided I needed to move out, he was not expecting me to, to, to move out. Uh, I just got become very afraid of him and my friends and family were afraid for me there. And, um, but anyway, he had put a master lock on the bedroom door where I still had things. I had to get a, uh, 
a locksmith friend to come out and open my master bedroom door for me. I was sleeping in the guest room. But he had gone out of town for 10 days to go to, to Colorado. And that's when I knew that I was, I had better get out. And, um, God, this is so hard to talk about. <laughs> Jeez. Um, anyway, um, these were things he had ordered, you know, that he was going to handle. And I remember crying to him one day saying, because I didn't understand why he was being the way he was being. And I didn't understand. I didn't understand any of it. Because he was a, a cancer survivor and he had been in a near fatal car wreck and had had two hip replacement surgeries. And I wasn't with him during that time, but I would have stood by him no matter what. And we were living together as husband and wife. He already called me by his last name. And, and um, so for someone to, to not only leave you when, because they're not getting the affection they need or you can't be everything that they want you to be during that time. That um, it's one thing to like, like to bail on someone, but to become so, so terribly cruel. Like you guys have probably seen the video I made where he had cut up, he had unwired the power to my, to my bedroom. I was going to my mom's in the evening just to avoid confrontation with him. And then coming home when I knew he would be in bed. And I came home one night and I had no power in my room and I was so naive. I'm thinking, oh, I thought I replaced that bulb recently. And I went to my other lamp and on the other side. And, and then I just thought, he's wow really he's gonna make me go switch the breaker he's being so awful and cruel and just then went way beyond that you guys can saw that video he didn't just switch the breaker and i called the police and everything but anyway but this with the with the with the scale and the stuff i was i was crying to him one day like but i don't even know how to use this stuff and you were gonna help me and before he went out of town I got up that morning. I waited till I knew, knew it was gone before I got up. And I got up and the, the, the drawer to our hutch was pulled wide open and left deliberately all the way open. And um and the scale and the and the capsules and the little other little thing, which I still have those two. I don't I'm not gonna ever use those probably. Um it it was gone. The drawer was empty, but deliberately left open. If you guys had seen this hutch, it was a huge antique hutch. It's not a drawer that you could just forget to close. He wanted me to see that he had taken it. It was just, it was one more cruel thing that he could do to me. I assumed maybe he had trashed it or whatever, but when I had my friend come out and, uh, to unlock my door and I started going through all you know all the drawers and making sure that you know I got everything that was mine and didn't take stuff that wasn't mine I even left money in his nightstand drawer I mean there's so many things I would do differently now but and um even with what I saw it is nice then we had a beautiful king-size bedroom suit brand new and um he had taken all that stuff and put it in his nightstand drawer N knowing that I or him thinking I was not going to be getting in his bed in the master bedroom while he was gone took it from me I just locked it up so even if I wanted to use it to help myself or to start tapering I it, it was going to be locked up away away and um, it was it was beyond hateful I was in shock I I you know, especially the way he just left the drawer open to be like, <laughs> it was like, you know, it was just, it was just evil. It was, just, there was so much evil going on. And the reason I share that is because this is all part of like the snowball effect of what happens with this. And, you know, it brings out things in people you never thought you would ever, ever fathom. I really didn't see red flags, you know, like before a lot of this started happening. And so you're left dealing with things like that. You're left 
with these you know haunting images of what things that someone that you loved so much that you thought loved you so much that promised to see you through this did to you and that were so terrifying and whether it was screaming and calling you filthy names or where you're locked in the bathroom and they're banging on the door like Jack Nicholson in Psycho in the the Shining, you know, and you don't want to come out and just things like that. And you're having to deal with all of that kind of stuff. And then the family stuff too. And then the moving, like myself, moving in with my son, which is something I shouldn't be having to do. My son is 20, well, he'll be 26 this month. And his wife just turned 20 in November, you guys. You know, they're young and they just got married a year ago. They're just starting their lives together. And this is not what they should have to be doing. But, and that's killing me. That's killing me to do this to my son. It's just killing me. Because at my age, this is not, well, this is not what any of us saw for our life right now. This is not. I think about where my mom was at, at this age, and my mom was still so vibrant. And we'd go out car singing karaoke. My mom was a professional singer, too. She sang with Merle Haggard, Buck Owens, so these people. She's made 45 records. And one of them, I think, is if you go down the very beginning of my YouTube, when it wasn't really a YouTube channel, but is there. Um, in we'd go out karaoke and I never wanted to follow my mom singing because she'd get standing ovations and people always thought we were sisters, you know. She was just, she was so young and vibrant. She was a great grandmother. She was so much fun and and she was really being able to be a part of her grandkids' life and she did, she really did a lot for my kids and, and um, you know, and now it's like none of us had, you know, you know, it's just what's happened with, with every, everything is in our family it's just it's just awful and but it's all part of what we what we have to go through with this it's all part of this this terrible snowball effect of like this type of an illness that is looked at as you know crazy or or it can't possibly be real um let me say this my uh you know i have well, I'm not going to say who exactly, but I have I have family, immediate family, who have been on a couple of these medications for a long time. Though they've been tapered a little bit some, but they, uh, their doctor has, you know, continuously told them, you know, that there's no way that I could possibly still be going through withdrawal from this medication. That's not possible. So, you know, you have doctors still telling people that, and still telling your family that. So, you know, but... Anyway, yeah, that's certainly not helping things. <laughs> but I guess I just felt like I wanted to, I don't know, just make this because to let you guys know that I know some of you guys are having a much worse day than I am today. I know that. But there's things that even, whether it's a food poisoning that can, you know, cause us to have a major setback. And, um, or just, and then you're, and then they're going, oh my gosh, I didn't even call and cancel my, my, my doctor's appointment on Tuesday. And I, it was a reschedule from a cancellation where I couldn't go. And I haven't even talked to them. I turned my phone on airplane mode and at night and on Tuesday when that happened, um, I never took my phone out of airplane mode. I, I was, oh my gosh. Um. And so my phone wasn't back on till yesterday, and I was like, and I still haven't called them. So you got all this stuff. It's like, oh my gosh, I got this, this, and this, and this, and I need to pack, and I haven't done it. I've cleaned out a couple cabinets and thrown some stuff away. That's that's it. <laughs> like, but you know, Easter was beautiful. Your Easter, I went out and walked five miles, and then today is today. <laughs> yeah today's today but you know it's the first day none I've eaten in three days so that doesn't help so basically we gotta fight through stuff that people think should be a breeze 
or the most people normally get through or would normally get through much easier because it's not just physical torment, you know, and people that are going through diseases or illnesses that are mainly like, like physical or, but they have still have the strength of their mind to fight whatever's going on physically that this is, this is a, uh, this is a, this is a physically and mentally and emotionally and brutal, 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 um, illness and I don't mean mentally and emotionally like like you have depression yeah boy you have depression but it's not normal type depression but um, and it's not mental illness it's it's um it is in the way that it's your, your brain is just just is not working properly but you're not you're not mentally ill you're looked at that way um yeah until you can make a window of a and those who know go, yeah, she's she's definitely not mentally ill. Or you might get a couple that'll look at that and go, clearly she's bipolar. You know, well, no, I'm not. Um, and it was have been since told that that was a misdiagnosis. <sighs> okay, well, I one of you guys had commented that you wanted me to talk about akathisia, which I that's what I now know I had when my mother and my son were having to care for me around the clock about five years ago after the drug Abilify. If I had known what I know now, I would have had one of them videotaping me because they are gathering more videos of akathisia and the um, World Benzo World Awareness Benzazine Day on July 11th, you guys, um, is getting more, because if someone's collecting videos, I, I would have had, I would have had my son do some video on that um, my cold turkey experience mimicked, uh, some of, some of definitely of akathisia, uh, symptoms. Um, I was a walking, I was a pacing freak show. It was, uh, it was a horror and that's when attempted suicides came in from akathisia. Um, so, but that, uh, I'll have to talk about that on another uh, video. This one was not planned for today whatsoever. A Tuesday before what I assume was food poisoning. My goal was to get up, try to uh, walk again, um, maybe do a, uh, a couple errands before I went to a four o'clock appointment. Um, I now have not left my apartment since, uh, since I guess, well, since my walk on on Easter, I have not been out of this, my out of my apartment. And that totally sucks. Okay, I know mean, this is going to be like about 15 minutes and going on 30 minutes. And I know this has been like crazy rambling and it's not fun. It's not pleasant. And, but it is what it is. Or as some of you guys know, I love to say it is what it isn't. And, and, but you know what? And no, I'm, it's two o'clock now. And no, I was like, okay, so fight, 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 fight get dressed, fight. I have garbage. I have garbage that needs to go to my dumpster. I, I need to at least see if I got mail. <laughs> like something. Just like fight. You guys just fight. Do something. We have to fight. We just have to fight. Because I've been fighting this too long to give up now. And, and, uh, yeah, anyway. But, that's my point. I hope you guys, do you guys understand what my point was to this video? Is that we're, we're, we're expected. It's expected of us. And we kind of have to accept that it's expected of us to deal with everything in life. The little stresses, the big stresses, everything. It's just expected of us to be able to deal with it. Whether we're alone, whether we're not alone, whatever. And so... <laughs> And for those of you guys who are with me on Facebook, Facebook tends to not be a good place for me, and I'm trying to back off from it a little bit. So if you don't see me on there, that's as much as why. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to sign off now. Sorry this is a 30-minute kind of kind of or depressing video. And um, for those of you guys who have let me know you're not, you're really struggling. And I, 
I don't know if it's your name, Hayden, that wrote to me with the, with Parkinson's. Thank you for sharing your story. It's like so heartbreaking, overwhelming that, that you reached out to me still. And Teresa, Princess T, we're praying for you. And all of you guys out there that are really you're having such a difficult, difficult, difficult time. If anybody's heard from Poet, please let me know because I haven't been able to get in touch with her. And anyway, I could name off of so many names, but anyway, some of you guys I do keep in touch with privately. So anyway, I love you all. I know you love me and that, that, that helps. So, and, um, yeah. And if I, tr I even tried to get back to some of your comments yesterday, even though I was still really sick. So I don't get overwhelmed with like how many there are because I like to make sure I get back to everybody. So, but, you know, if I don't get to your comments, you know, for a few days or whatever, you'll know why. Or I'll try to, when I can, try to stay on top of the comments, okay? But anyway, now it's like onward and somewhere upward because, you know, the opposite of upward is not, that's not good. That's not good. All right, I'll talk to you guys later, and um, God bless you guys, and um, hopefully next one will be much better. And I'll talk to you about some more stuff and more of my story, and um, still want to recap of how this all happened to me so you can know how I feel about it all, how it started. For me, it started with antidepressants. I want people to know that before Benzos. So... If I haven't shared that, I want to talk to start from the beginning. All right. Love you guys. Bye.